Well, good morning to you all, and thank you for joining me out on what is a glorious, glorious day this morning. I had a beautiful sunrise this morning on my own, and we are going offshore wrecking today. I've just stopped short. I'm going to be today between 20 and 25 miles offshore. Now, that's not from safe haven, so that's not from the port. That is the nearest land to me today will be 20 to 25 miles behind me at any given point. So we're a long way off. Everything's wired tight. I've just stopped short now of my first wreck, and this is actually an inshore wreck. I like to break up the journey, so this is probably about halfway to where I want to get to. The reason I do that is one, it gives me a chance to shake out, get the deck all sorted out, get my lime wet, and you never know when you're going to drop on some fish. And I've done that plenty of times before. I'll always make a plan. I'll work out a route in my head that can be deviated from, but I'll always stop short, have a quick go, and more often than not, you pick up a few bonus fish, or sometimes you drop on the mother load and you've only gone half the distance that you plan to. I never just steam straight to A to B. I'll always go via a few bits. So sidewinders today, slow jigs, also the name of the game, small ties today. And I do have my water wolf with me. So if the conditions are right and the wreck is right, I'll put that down. Hopefully we get some lovely footage, but flat calm all day. Hopefully we can get some fish. Let's go. Okay, to start with, just going down with a rhubarb and custard. Uh, that's a six inch. And that's gonna be just on a, a standard wrecking boom that we use that you'd have seen before. And I'm only gonna go down with six ounces of lead. We've got no tide. That, that I could probably get away with a four, in all honesty. Um, but we'll go down with this to start with. I will later on get the jigs out. But for now, this is a good starting point. A nice big snaggy one this one like i said you never know pick up a few bonus fish it breaks up the journey so you're not driving for an hour and a half just bum 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 you can stop shake out get your braid wet as we're doing here now like i said you never know when you're going to pick up a few bonus fish so this is a 1220 custom build that john built me lovely light 1220 this is a pen fathom uh, 25 lever drag really nice reel this one and that's got a 30 pound mainline braid attached to it length for leader and then a fluorocarbon trace pretty standard stuff no secrets i'm not going to spend too much time on this one this was just a it's on the way to my first stop off point so i'll give it a go so if we haven't had nothing on this go i'll just move on to the next one but like i said it's a good chance to get out of wheel out for five minutes get everything shaken down and if you catch it you think it's a bonus nothing on the first go then or first wreck normally i'll give them a couple of goes just to get them you can work a wreck in three three or five drifts you get an idea of what's down there if it's loaded normally it's bang 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 off the bat you don't have to worry but if you don't get a tap or a take or anything within three or four drifts normally that's time to move on you're better off moving until you find a wreck that's loaded than trying to snatch one or two fish but i know my drift line now so i can pretty much go up to the next wreck straight away and just go so that's what we're going to do i was asked the other day down the marina by someone who follows the channel um, how do you set up for wrecks properly because i can never get the same drift line twice so to sort of half answer that question it's hard to try and explain something without physically showing you. And I'm outside at the minute, so I can't go in there. First thing you do when you're approaching a wreck is you just stop short of it. And the reason for that is you work out your drift line because you stop short of it, you can get out, get your rods off the roof, you can get tackled up, clip your weights up. And in that time, if you put a fresh track on your plotter, you'll be able to see which way you're drifting. Now that'll tell you, obviously, which way your boat is going to go. Then it's just a case of circling around, try to avoid going over the wreck, and then set yourself up on a line that is gonna follow that last drift line or that track that you've just made. Now, approaching the wreck, a lot of people have different opinions on this, and I don't see many people do it how I do it. But as you're coming around to the wreck, take a nice wide berth. As you're approaching your stop point, put it into neutral, and then go astern slightly and that just takes the momentum out of the boat if you don't do that 
and obviously you've got some forward motion so a lot of people will just knock it into neutral and then walk out the wheelhouse and the boat will carry on going under its own motion and power and that that's it but by putting it astern you take all the momentum out of the boat and it brings it to a dead stop that way your drift line is going to be the same every single time straighten your engines up as well make sure your engines are straight and the reason for that is if you firstly don't take the momentum out of the boat you've only got to be going half a knot quicker than the last drift and your drift line is going to carry on in a different line than it was before if your engine position is different every time you stop the boat again you're going to have a different drift line because obviously your engine your rudder your prop that will all catch the tide differently to the last time round. So it's not particularly difficult, but if you're struggling to get a consistent drift line, there is the wreck. Uh, that's a fish showing. Take. Yeah, if you're struggling to get a consistent drift line, it can often be that you're making it hard work for yourself by not doing those things. Now, some people will just go, oh, you don't need to put the brakes on. But when you think about the logic behind it, it makes perfect sense and nearly all of the charter boats that I've been on and grown up on over the years that's how they've all operated and it's where I've learned so hopefully that helps you out I've just gone down with a slightly heavier lead that last one was a homemade one and I think it was probably more like four or five ounces and six and it just wasn't cutting it still a little bit of tide run even though it's a small tide it's a flood tide and I tend to push a bit heavier here down at Eastbourne so it's gone onto a slightly heavier lead. If you know something's not working, straight off the bat, just change it. So all that'll happen is you'll end up putting your gear in the wreck, which you may still do anyway, uh, but you're losing. You want to try and be as up and down as possible, really. That wreck is going to be coming in any second. Just seen another boat go bomb past me from in, a, in the horizon. I think it was a friend of mine. He's going out to the opposite direction to where I'm going today. I'm trying somewhere new today. Had all those lovely fish last time out with John and Jake, and I'm gonna try and avoid that wreck today and let's try and get a picture of fish elsewhere down the channel. I normally wouldn't run away from fish, but they're still out deep, so I wanna try and put a picture in my mind for next year. So I've got options in my pocket, as it were. All right, the wreck's there. Yeah, fish on, fish on. There we go, guys. Very high up, that one. Feels. I might come off now. I don't know, still there. Felt like a small pollock, but I might, I might have bumped it off. What have we got then, folks? It is a tiny, tiny pollock. And the hook's actually just come out, but that was on a rhubarb and custard. And it is a baby, baby, baby pollock. Still got the juvenile black spots on this. You can tell a pollock from a coal fish, they have a underbite, so the lower jaw sticks out further and the lateral line has got a dip in it Whereas a coal fish is straight. But first fish of the day. And it powers away. So we'll take that quite high up that one. Which is normally how pollock are. Pollock normally sit quite high. But off the bar, off the board, off the mark. Happy days. So off the bat, first one. Second wreck. I think it was second drop down, third drop down maybe. And uh, yeah, a little tiny pollock. What I expected in here, um, the big pollock are starting to move in shore now, but we're still still a little way off yet um, from seeing those big fish in shore. But it's nice to get a fish on. It has reminded me to get my net down, although I'll have to do it next drift because we're already on it. Nothing worse than being alone and getting a nice fish and then realising your net 
isn't within arm's reach. The erection's showing. I'm just going to drop down again. Could be suicidal, but you never know. Hit it to win it. As soon as I feel that donk on that wreck, I am cranking like that. Just to get a cut of turns to get it up. And that's just a case of constant running until something takes it. Oh, that was a take then. Yeah, just dropping it down to the bottom. Probably 10, 15 turns on this one is a fish. Right, there's something on that guy, I think. Dead weight though, that might be either a pout or we've got a cut along. Dead weight there. They have started getting a lot of cuttlefish in shore now. Uh, there's something on there. Jumbo pout. Just, just as I thought. Took that almost as soon as I hit the wreck. Jumbo pout, but I'll keep him. Like I said, he'll come in handy later if I want to put some baits down. Oh, I'll try that again then. You don't win prizes for pout. Yep, oh, well, that, was a, that was a take. Come back, yeah, let's come back. There you go, it's a Pollock. That is a Pollock. I don't know if you saw that on camera. He hit it, and all I did was just keep on winding, and he came back for it. If you stop, that lure looks unnatural, and it will, it will reject it. Yeah, he hit it, hit the tail, just carried on winding, and he came back around for a second go. It's only gonna be another small one. Leader, what have we got? Oh, do you know what? That ain't too shabby. Well, look, I'll take that. There we go. That's a better one. Oh. There we go. Still not a monster, but he has in smash that rhubarb like i was saying he hit it and then he it obviously didn't hook up just kept on winding and they instantly swing back round for another go i've seen it on the camera underneath and obviously it's common knowledge anyway but for those that don't know if you get a take don't strike just keep winding and that's your result powers away Start your pollock in head first so they glide in the water and they have like a natural instinct just to kick on. Don't belly flop them, but guide them in, torpedo them in, and we're only in shallow water here. But that was a nice one. We'll work that again. That was all right. I'll take that. Don't mind a few of those. Right, two things have happened. One, I've had to swap the GoPros over so the audio might sound different. The other one's gone man down, lost a couple of screws and fallen apart. And uh, the second thing is, I am going down with the water wolf underwater camera. I've gone over this wreck a couple of times now, bumped into it once, but I haven't actually snagged up that much. So I'm going to attempt to see if we can't capture something on underwater footage. And pray I don't lose it. I've got a review of this Water Wolf camera. They're available on Amazon and some, people, some tackle shops will stock them. They're becoming really more popular now because it opens up a whole new world to look at your rigs, the marks you fish, and you get to see stuff that you just wouldn't see from above the water. You get to look at your wrecks, look at all the reefs. You'll see lobsters, crabs, you'll see other fish swimming about. And of course, any fish that you lose on it, like I've just done, as long as you get the camera back, you get to see what it was. There's no questions or doubts. Which is another thing that I love. I have actually later on got a reef mark I want to look at. It's one that's not plotted, it's not charted in terms of, I don't think anyone knows where it is, it's a long, long way off. But I think it might be good later on in the year, so I'm going to stick the camera, as long as I get it back, I'm going to stick the camera down on there later, and just get home and have a look at it. It's a lovely, flat, calm day, as expected, this is beautiful. This will smooth out even more later, this is just a little bit of a residual from yesterday's wind. It's ideal today to get off and have another explore. Ideal. Hoping I was going to find something on this, so I will give it a couple of goes. Won't discount it straight away. But that tide is just turning now, so. 
Of course, I can always change colour of the lure as well. Got a rhubarb custard on at the minute, so I might go onto a white or a, a mackerel type pattern, or maybe a candy king. Um, perhaps they've switched off to that colour, perhaps they want something else. We shall see. Now I think it's going to move. There's another boat over there. I don't, don't particularly want to be sociable today. I want to punch off, find some fish and stay there. Um, and this one's been a bit quiet. So unless we get something sensible on this camera, then I will move again. I don't like to stay static if I'm not getting bites or fish. I just move. If a wreck is loaded, you get a bite almost instantly. Or every cut of drift, you're getting something nice. If you're not and you're going round and round and you're not even getting a sniff, just, just move. That's my way of doing it. Obviously, you can do whatever you like. But I don't flog a dead horse. If, if I'm not getting bites or a fish, I'll go straight away. What's that? Oh, yeah, hello. Oh, we picked something up here, guys. Right on the bottom. Oh, it wasn't even on the wreck. It's, it's having a bit of a nod here. You know, I've got a bit of extra drag with the camera on, but that feels quite solid. It doesn't feel like a pout. I mean... No, I don't think that's a pout. What have we picked up here then? I didn't know better, I'd say that was a cod. Not particularly head shaky, but it was right in front of the wreck, right on the bottom. It's a bold shout that, and I'm, I'm probably going to be wrong. It's just come off. It's just come off. Ah, oh, no. Whatever that was, I will see what that was, and I will tag it in now. Well, here it is. As it was coming down, the lead is just touching down the bottom, and we snag a pollock right in the head. Couldn't have did that any better for Mr. Poor Old Pollock there. But that's why the fight felt different, and it did feel a bit coddy, because as you can see, he's not crashing and diving. He's nodding from side to side, where he's hooked right in the noggin. But he does try hard, he fights hard, and he carries on fighting away. Someone else comes to have a look at him. That was Mr. Bass trying to take the lure, and eventually his efforts are rewarded as he gets away. on the camera and it's caught it. But not too shabby. It's another one. And that was on a Perry a Perry <laughs> big about Pollock. So small four inch white scaries. Has blown this one unfortunately. We're in deeper water now so the Pollock are gonna blow. So he will go back. But happy days. Well just in reaction to that one there I took it on the white and I had whatever that was at the start of that was on the white and the drifts on the rhubarb and custard previously had not even had a sniff. So I've moved on to a six inch, super slim, scary zeal in white pearl, pearl color, just to see if it's the white that they want. And if that's the case, then we know we've got some more information. And then we can go on whites for the rest of the day. Sometimes colors don't matter right? uh, a single bit. And other days they will just want a certain color. Whether it's a match the hatch or whatever, I don't know, but yeah, a lost fish and a pollock on that little tiny four inch. Could also be the size. Sometimes they want a four inch and other times they want a six inch or an eight inch or even bigger. And it's all about just reacting to the information that you gain. It's getting warm, I'll have to take my jumper off in a minute. Right, and you wreck this one and it is tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. I've done my best. Hopefully we can hit it first go. Tide has turned now. We've got that half a knot. So we've got enough to work with. And it's got that hot. I've taken a jumper off. Hopefully we hit this one. Very small, but got a lovely little profile to it. So 
anyone who's followed the channel long enough knows I enjoy fishing the smaller wrecks. They're harder to hit, so a lot of people don't bother with them because they are harder to hit. And that's us on the bottom. All right, going down with a jig now. The Sidewinder 160 gram silver halo. It's a long, thin one with a curve in it. It has a proper little banana darty type action. By that, I mean a curve. <laughs> said the word B now, someone will be going, oh my god! But let's try. I think there was just pout. That all, everything, all the bites I had there were pouts. So we'll try. If not, the next leg of this journey is quite a far one into, into foreign waters. So let's see. Covered it in my last video, but all we're doing is a sharp up. And then you're looking to get the line that you're jigging up should almost curl back on itself. Oh, yeah, fish on. There you go. That's about. There you go. That's what we want. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Works straight away. I feel pouty. Um, yeah, you're looking to get the line curl back up on top of the water and back on itself. Right, here we go. What have we got? It was a bit heavier than a pelt. Doesn't mean I haven't foul looked one. It's a foul look whiting. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> I wasn't wrong. But he'd be good conga bait in a bit. Oh, mad as it sounds, I think that's my first whiting of the year. Bring something up sideways with these jigs, it feels a lot heavier than it, it actually is. That was a small pollock for a second. I'm just hitting the bottom. I'm sort of reeling and doing some short jigs up. This is only a small wreck, this one. So I haven't got to come that high. And then once you get there, just up and down, that's it. There's no, no real dark arts to it, but it is a really nice way to fish. And every now and then, all I'll do is I'll just drop it down to the bottom and I'll reset the the depths of it, just so I know I'm in touch with the lure. And as your line goes away from you, you can sometimes, your lure will actually be a lot higher than you think it is. So I'll just drop down. Right. Quite literally in foreign waters now. We're about where I wanted to start looking. I left early this morning so I can have a play about in there, pick up a few bonus fish which we've done. Now we're out into deeper water, French wrecks, and I've, I've never fished these ones. So this is me now gambling, and there is the wreck. We've come a long way here to wrecks that I don't know anything about, and that will either pay off, or it won't. Down with a jig to start with, just to see what's going on. It's quite a, a big wreck in length, but it looks it looks quite broken up and doesn't stand up that high. Cutler goes with the jigs, cutler goes with the softs, and then we move. Got to try new things, otherwise you'll get stuck in a rut. It's the thing that normally works thing that normally works stops working and you've got no other plan. Right, so we're going down with a, uh, a scary zeal again, sidewinder scary zeal in pearl. Not holding out much hope. Like I said, if the wreck's loaded, you're on. Big big believer in that. I don't, I don't like driving round and round a single wreck trying to snatch your fish here and there. If you've got a shoal of God knows how many fish on it. I hit it as soon as it drops down. I know a wreck can turn on a tide, I know that, I'm aware of that. But generally, if you've got say, fish on it, you're, you're in it, you're on. So let's try it. Perhaps I just want something a bit different than a metal. I will slip the water wolf down again in a second because it doesn't seem particularly snaggy, this one. Right, 
Get down with the camera. Like I said, it doesn't seem too snaggy this one, so I'll have a go. I actually quite fancy this one for eels. It's north to south. And where it is, you're not gonna get bothered too much. And it's been here a long time, so I might pay this one a visit around October time. Yeah, I do like the look of this one. All right, there we go. Okay, we are on wreck number six, I think it is now today. Still only had a handful of pollock. It's not been brilliant, but I didn't expect to find anything and to have to start searching, searching around until I got out of here. So I'm hoping now that one of these wrecks that I've selected out here is gonna be loaded and I can just go round and round all day. Otherwise I've burnt a lot of fuel today for a few fish, which is how it goes. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have got a couple of bits of ground to check out this way for later on in the year. And any information I can gain whilst putting some fish on the boat wrecking is a bonus and that will serve me well later on. Got an absolutely massive, massive container ship outside of me. Perfectly fine, he's miles away, but it is a big boy. I'll try and show you it in a minute after this drift. You don't realise how, I know it sounds silly, but these, when you look at these big container ships, because they are so big, you don't think they're moving that fast. And now he's got level with me, he, he is shifting. Really shifting. Well, this has been a hard slog so far. I'm a long way here for not much at the minute. Of course, it only takes out one wreck, and that's what I'm hoping on. And I'm happy to have gained new information, but I was hoping to have pulled a few, few fish out of these wrecks. Gone down every single one, perfect. Hit every bit of it. Just a bit slow this side. I've gone a different direction to last time, so I know where the fish are currently, but I've come the other way on purpose to, one, just get away from a few people, and two, to try and, get, just try and work out a bigger picture. But it's backfiring at the minute. Nothing again. What a day this is turning out to be. Beautiful weather, beautiful conditions, but the fish are just not playing ball for me today. <sighs> one more wreck after this one that I wanted to try and look at, it's a big one. And after that, I'm out of ideas. I'm going to have to start heading back anyway. It's only early. It's only 11 o'clock now. But we've come out a long way and we've burnt a lot of fuel. So, at some point, you have to accept that that's your lot. And just take it. No good crying about it. I don't know what it is with the radio. Some days 16 should be a hello, go to channel 10, whatever else, go to another working channel. Some vessels just want to have a full on conversation on there. Absolutely winds my, gets right on my, gets right on my, where it should get on. Grinds my gears, what I was trying to say. For those that are monitoring, they have to sit there and listen to a full on conversation. And this one's in French, don't even know what they're saying. Time for last chance saloon. Got one more wreck, one more trick up my sleeve. And I've got a couple of bits of marks I want to look at, and then I'm going to have to start cutting my way back into the inshore wrecks again. Thought there would have been something out here. Fingers crossed for this last one, come on. Well, we are steaming. I'm going full part here, I don't know how well you'll hear me. It was absolutely dreadful down there. Dreadful. So I'm going the opposite end of where I was gonna go or where I was. I'm going all the way down, long way, and I'm gonna try and find some fish on some wrecks that have been producing already for me later on in the last couple of sessions. I think it's gonna be busy down here. I think there's gonna be a few boats. Um, but I've got 
got to do something. I'm having a real slow day today. And I don't like that. So I'm going to make it happen. We'll check the fuel. We've got enough fuel, so we're going to bomb down. Uh, but hopefully we can get there now. We've done our exploring. I've got some good information now. A couple of banks I want to look at and a reef. Both look really good for later in the year, August onwards. So it wasn't a complete bust. We want some more fish. We are going full power. Let's go. Oh, what a drive that was. We're still not where I want to be yet, but there is another wreck. It's an old charter boat mark that I've got. And I'm never out this far normally to check it out. And I'm, this, it's, it's not an area I normally fish, so I was going past it. It was only a mild deviation from on the way down to where I was going. So I figured, well, you know what? We'll check it out and have a look. Still got a fair way to go yet to get to burn some fuel today. It's going to be quite tight. Perfectly within limits, but it's going to be quite tight. Um, but yeah, we've got a long way to go still yet to the wreck where I'm hoping there will be some. But I've got to give this one a go. That sun is bright and it has gone pancake flat. Oh, there's the wreck. Just looked at the sun and couldn't look in the wheelhouse. I couldn't see the plotter. Oh, there's a take. Yep, yeah, fish on. There we go. Oh, that's a better one. That's a better one. Oh, that's finally. That feels like a nice fish, that one. Finally. It's been hours without a bite. And we've got a fish on, and I think it's a pollock. In fact, I would almost guarantee it's a pollock. Like I said, done what I wanted to do, got exploring. Didn't have anything on it, but I've gained some information. Time to go and find those fish now. I know where they are at the minute. Straight off the bat, we've got one on this one. That's great. Here it comes. That is a pollock. He just took this one, so I'm going to net him. There we go. Pollock in the boat. Oh, long, long drive anyway today, but that was a long drive to come back down where I wanted to be, or not where I wanted to be, where I've caught fish previously. First drop down, bang on the money. Get in. Oh, right. Let's get this sorted out and we're going to have a look. Get you out of the way. Oh, he's actually quite well hooked to the end. But there we go. That was like an orangey sidewinder. Happy days. Oh, that felt good to be back in the groove there for a minute. A long time without any takes, not even a sign. Long time, that felt nice, that was good. Hopefully now we get a few fish here. I haven't got to go all the way down where I was going. I can just go round and round here. I'm currently still on my own, which is lovely. Hopefully we can get a few fish, that'd be lovely. I saw it as I was bombing down the channel. I saw the mark and I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm out here. Don't not try it for the sake of going an extra mile out of your way. You've already driven loads of miles anyway. And I'm glad I did now, because that was straight away, bang. And the wreck looked lovely as well. It looks a really good wreck. Proper chunky. Chunky monkey. Some wrecks out here down in our area, they're really flat. They've been down here since World War II or even World War I in time, some of them. And they can be quite flat and not have much profile to them. And that one really looked like it, it picks up right in the centre. There's a snatch. Again, okay, just going to keep reeling. Hopefully, it comes back. Oh, 
help. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Positive sign though. Fish and a solid snatch, that's good. I'm gonna have town lines by the end of today, I think. The sun has come right out. Proper feels like spring now. Right, there's the wreck. Can't quite make out who the vessel is. But there's a vessel off Beachy Head taking on water. Call it a mayday. I'm a long way, I'm a long way. If I was any closer, I'd dap in and uh, offer assistance, but it's not good when a boat's taking on water. Fish on guys on the white scaries. I think we've got another pollock. It feels very pollocky. I just dropped it back down to the bottom. Six turns up, maybe. Bang. Here's the leader. No, here's another pollock. Another pollock, guys. Yeah. There we go. All about the same stamp so far today, three, four pound. It's engulf that eel. Nice. All right, let's see if this one goes back. The other one didn't go back. This one hasn't blown. He's still good there. I played him quite slow. So let's see if he goes back. Yep, he's off, he's gone. Yeah, he's powering down. Happy days. Getting there now. Now I'm starting to make a bit of a session. I'm not a big fish eater, so it's always nice when you can put the fish back. My partner eats fish, so do my friends and family, but I don't like when you're coming out this far, if they're all blowing, they're all dying, and they're all coming home. Let's fish. Yep. Oh, did my, did my commit? Well, that's the end of another Amputee Angler session. Wasn't storming. I went looking at new wrecks, new marks. I, did, I was about as far away from the last session where we had all those fish as about as I could get. So, you know, that's always a gamble. However, we did have a few pollock. I think we ended up on five or six, I think. No showstoppers, but it was all right. Got some lovely footage on the water wolf, I hope. And I've tried out a few new marks and found one that's holding some fish as well, or a little bit potentially. So that's good. Fuel situation is a little bit low, probably got enough just to get in, uh, or we'll have enough to get in, um, but I don't want to push it too much and bomb around chasing fish and then leave myself short. So long, lot of miles again today, but we're heading in. It's been a stunning day. I mean, you can't argue with that, can you? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon, and uh, there'll be another video here if you want to watch it.